Hello everybody, Frank here, and I'm glad that you're here because in this video, I'm going to show you a tool that can help you capture, memorize, and learn information in a much better way, in a way that's based upon the science and the research into how people learn. It's a note-taking app called Scrintle. It's one of my favorite tools when I'm trying to learn something, connect things together, and I wanna take rich notes. I wanna take notes that are effective that help me actually accomplish my goal, which is to learn. We're gonna take a look at that in the video. We're gonna take a look a little bit at note-taking in general and why it's a good idea for learning, and then we're going to look at some of the challenges with traditional note-taking methods, and then we'll look at Scrintle and, and see how it really overcomes these challenges and becomes the tool that we wanna use. If you're in a lecture or a meeting or reading a book, anytime you're interacting with a lot of information, taking notes can help you connect to that information as it's being delivered. It also provides an artifact that you can use to review what was said and what was done at another point in time, reinforcing your experience with that information. So that's all great, and that's something that we've done for many, many years. And research confirms that that is a good way to learn. I'll put some article links down below in the description to different research papers that I've read on the benefits of note-taking. But when you read those research papers, there is something that sticks out. And that is, those notes have to be good notes. And what makes a good note? A good note is a note that we interact with. A good note captures the essence of what was happening at the time the note was taken. And we refer to this as a rich note or a note that has good content to it. Now, I could use a notebook. This is a typical way of taking notes and you know, there's nothing wrong. Well, there is something wrong, but there's, you know, notebooks are a traditional way that we normally take notes. I might, you know, write down things that are happening. I might keep track of things, but the challenge is with these notebooks is it's a very linear experience. One page follows another. It's, it's sequenced within the book itself. I can do a little bit of, you know, this page refers to this page. I could have pages that maybe I can take out of the book and move to different areas, and that can become messy pretty fast. But you're generally speaking about a very linear experience and an experience that is hard to remix. It's hard to move things around. It's hard to make connections. And definitely, if I have any type of media, like audio files or multimedia files or web links, I'm not going to be able to put them into this book directly. I'm going to have to put a reference to them in the book and then look them up separately. They're still very valuable. I still carry a little notebook around with me to capture notes on the go, but it's not a great learning tool for deep, connected, rich notes. You can use it for what it's worth, but you know, there's all sorts of videos on the best way to journal and the best way to take notes with split pages and bullet journaling and stuff, but ultimately, you're not going to be able to put digital assets into a paper form, and you're not going to be able to have a lot of remix ability with these. The next thing that you could use, which I used a lot, are index cards. And index cards I absolutely love because I get the ability to put a note on here, and I can use different colors of index cards to connect things together around themes, and I can move these around using either pins or magnets on a board. So these are actually a very effective way when I'm using paper notes to take notes and to remix the notes and to connect the notes. So you think, oh, those are pretty good, but still no multimedia, no digital assets, and they're, you know, they can become cumbersome when you have a few hundred of these. Plus, no matter what size index card you get, you're going to be limited with the amount of information that one card can hold. And that's where Scrintle comes in. Let's take a look at how Scrintle, which is based upon the idea of index cards notes, really elevates it by allowing me to have an infinite canvas for my notes, by allowing me to have all sorts of different types of data on the notes, and allows me to connect those notes together. Scrintle is my new favorite way to take notes, and if you check it out, I'm sure it'll be yours as well. To demonstrate just how powerful Scrintle is as a rich note-taking app, I'm going to do a breakdown of this book by Ali Abdal, Feel Good Productivity, and show you how I might take notes on this book. I wanna read this book with intention. 
I want to make sure that as I go through each chapter, I connect the ideas in the book to each other, as well as connect to the external world and other resources that might exist. Ali Abdal is a huge YouTuber, 4 million, 5 million subscribers, and he has a lot of videos. So maybe I want to connect some of the ideas in his book to videos that he's created as well, or third-party videos, other people's videos. Let me show you what I mean. So normally what I'll do is I'll take a book, especially a textbook, and I'll go into the table of contents. And then what I'll do is I'll replicate the table of contents in Scrintle. So you can see here that I've got part one, Energize. Part one, Energize here, has three chapters, which are titled Play, Power, People. I'll continue to do that until I have the entire table of contents in Scrintle. To do that, what I'll do is I'll go in, and you can see that I can add a new card, I can go in and toggle and pan around. I can go in and create an entirely new board. So if I want a board for each chapter, I could go in and I can undo and redo what I've done. I'm not going to go through all of the features of Scrintle. There's quite a lot, but it's easy to learn and I'll do some other videos in the future. So I'm going to go in and create a new card on this existing board. I pop it down wherever I'd like and this is going to be titled part two. So this is part two of the, the book by Ali Abdal, and part two is titled Unblock. So we'll call this Unblock. Now, I've put part two in here, so you can see I have part one, part two. I can connect part one to part two. One of the things that I often like to do is go into the cards, and you'll notice that you can do things like change their layout, change their color. So maybe for part one, I'm gonna make all of the cards green. So we'll go in and change the color. This also makes them a little bit easier to see. So I can go in and change the color. You'll notice that with the color, I have a number of different colored cards that I can select. And this creates my part one will be all green. And maybe for part two, I'll go in and I'll make it a blue. So you can see I can continue to build up one card for each part of the book, as well as a card for each chapter in the book. You don't have to do it this way. You can do it whichever way works best for you. But I just find that as I break down a book in this manner and connect part one to all of its chapters, part two will be connected to all of its chapters. I can move things around and connect ideas. So I've gone through, I've put the table of contents in here. I can actually scroll out. So and if I grab the hand here, I can move this around. I can zoom in a little bit. So I can move around the canvas here and I can you know, uh, rearrange anything I'd like. If I go in and move one of the cards here, you'll notice that those connections remain in place, even if I move it over to the other side here, so I can retain all the connections are going to be there, and then I can follow links when I go into the card to the other cards it's connected to. So there's a lot that I can do here. I can really make all of the environment exactly the way that I like it. So let's say, for example, I have a video here. I'm just gonna grab a video here on why it's important to do play. And I just grabbed the URL. I watched the video. I thought that this did a good job of reinforcing some of the concepts in chapter one. I can go in and put the, the forward slash and do all sorts of different inserts. I could even put a card inside a card or I can link to other resources around the environment, around my, my Scrintle environment. I can put headings in here. So let's put a heading in here. So I'll go uh, slash H1 for a heading one, and then I'll put in the heading, um, you know, play. It's not the greatest name here, but the point here being is that I can put in whatever I like. So let's say, for example, I read the book and there's a list of things I want to put in there. All sorts of things can be in there, quotes, dividers to, to give it aesthetic appeal. I could upload images in here, on and so on and so forth. One of the things I really like in here is that I can actually insert PDFs. So if I'm doing research especially, a lot of my research papers are going to be in PDF format. So I can download all those PDFs and I can actually insert them into my note taking with Scrintle. So I've got basically a document library embedded within my notes library. It's fantastic. I'm gonna put in a YouTube video here and we'll just put in the URL for a YouTube video. And when I put that rich media in here, you'll notice that it puts the link in there. I can play it directly from within 
the note that I've taken. And you can make this note large so I can go in and it can fill the entire page of my Scrintle environment. So I can make a very detailed, interesting, interactive, useful note that I can work with. And I can just go back and I can see here, I can close this and I can move from note to note. And it's going to be this ability to create all of these notes that have a lot of information in them that are connected to each other that's going to make this much better than having a paper note system or an index card note system. And you can see how easy it was to use. So I'm not having to learn uh, some complex way to build a template before I can start taking notes. I can just go in and I can rearrange and change these. You can also work directly on the, on the canvas here or the board here. So I can create, for example, new cards, new boards within here. I could create text in here if I wanna say uh, feel good productivity. So I could go in and you know, make this my title for this particular board. I can go in and make changes, make it large if I want to. I can go in and I can change the color of this as well. If I want to maybe make it a little bit of an orange background here, move it around, and then that becomes the title of my, my board here in, in a text-based way. The title's actually up here, make it a favorite. So you can start seeing just how valuable it is to have a tool like Scrintle in order to make sure that the notes I'm taking are interesting and connected and I can work with them. In the end, the key is to make an environment that not only captures the information and what you want to learn, but makes it interesting and fun to go and revisit it so you can reinforce and learn that information, not just by reading a bunch of text, but also by visiting a website, reading a PDF, watching a YouTube video, all of which you've collected and have begun interacting with as part of your learning journey. There's more to Scrintle. If you're interested in seeing a complete tutorial of all of the features, comment down below and I I'll, I'll can show you exactly how I can break down books, how I can break down a research paper. There's so much we can do with Scrintle. Just comment down below if the video was useful. Hit the like button and we'll see you in the next video.